Hello, Algebra Tours. Today we're going to be talking about solving absolute value equations and inequalities. Remember that with equations, we're going to have an equal sign in that mathematical phrase, and then with inequalities, we'll have some kind of greater than or less than symbol. Okay? So what you're going to need today are notes, pen or pencil, and a calculator. And if you are not listening with your audio on, you will be very, very confused. So make sure before you move on that your audio is turned on and you're listening to this. You can't just autopilot this video, okay? So as we go throughout this video, it's been a while since we watched a video. Remember that you only have to write down the slides that have the pencil up in this corner. And since the pencil's not up in this corner, you don't need to write this down, but it is important to listen in order to fully understand, all right? So what you already know about absolute values is that the absolute value represents the distance a number is from zero. So think back to a number line. So when we think back to the number line, if we do negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, what we're saying is the absolute value of 3 is 3 because 3 is 3 units away from the value of 0 on a number line. The absolute value of negative 3 is also 3. They're both equal to 3 because negative 3 is also 3 units away from the value 0. Because we're talking about distance, absolute value always outputs a positive number. So that's why you always learned that a number can't be negative once it comes out of the absolute value is because we're talking about a distance a unit or units are away from zero okay so keep that in mind as we move forward what absolute value really means so the goal for us in this video is to take what we already know about absolute value and extend that knowledge by solving for absolute value equations or inequalities. So we're trying to figure out what we would need to do in order to solve for an equation like this one. Our equation reads that the absolute value of x plus 2 is equal to 5. So the first example that I want you to get down in your notes is using the equation um, or solving the equation using a graph, okay? So we have this equation, the absolute value of x plus 2 is equal to 5. So we want to think about what the graph of the absolute value of x plus 2 is equal to. So what is the graph f of x equal to the absolute value of x plus 2? Well, we know that this plus 2 is telling me that my graph from my parent graph is moving left 2. So my vertex is at negative 2, 0. And from there, it looks just like the parent function, OK? So we plot our other little points on either side of it. And I'm going to plot some more points. Hopefully that's enough. And on our parent graph, we would just go up one to the right one. OK, so my graph looks like this for the graph of that dot's not supposed to be there sorry so my graph of f of x is equal to the absolute value of x plus 2 looks like this so when we say that the absolute value of x plus 2 is equal to 5 we're saying on my graph where is it equal to the y value of 5 so where is it equal to 5? So my graph is equal to 5, or the y value, this is the y value that we're looking at of 5, is equal to here and here, those two points. So we want to know what x values give me that y value of 5. So they are, the solutions to this equation are x is equal to negative 7 and x is equal to 3. Because when we plug in negative 7, into our equation, negative 7 plus 2 is negative 5. The absolute value of that is 5. And when we plug in 3, we say 3 plus 2 is 5. The absolute value of 5 is also 5. So that's what's going on graphically when we're asking what is the solution for x when we have this equation. 
this is what's going on graphically. So we want to think to ourselves now, is there a way that we can just solve these equations without having to graph it every single time? Because you and I both know that we're not very fond of graphing things all the time. So the answer to this question is yes. And we're going to talk about that in the rest of this video. Okay, let's try an example without having to graph the equation or the absolute value equation to figure out what my two solutions are. But we can still think about, remember on our V, we had a negative side and a positive side where we were going to have two solutions for X. So we could plug in two values for X to get back of 50 on our equation, okay? So we have some steps to solve. First, we wanna isolate the absolute value by itself. So what we mean by that is we need a minus five from both sides of the equation so that we just have 5x minus 10 in absolute value on the left-hand side, and then 50 minus five is 45. So we did step one. Now step two says we need to set up two problems, one for the negative sloping side on our absolute value or on this side, and one for the positive sloping side on the absolute value function. So we're going to set up one for the negative sloping side and one for the positive side. So what that means is we're going to set up an equation where we have a negative being multiplied by the absolute value equal to 45, and we're going to have just a positive 5x minus 10 equal to 45. We need one of them to be positive, so our right one's positive, 5x minus 10 is positive, and we need the 5x minus 10 to be negative because we have two sides on our v for our absolute value function, okay? So now we set up two equations and we just need to solve. So let's solve the left one first. If we distribute that negative, we're going to get negative 5x plus 10 is equal to 45. Subtract 10 from both sides. We have a negative 5x is equal to 35. Divide by negative 5. Divide by negative 5. x is equal to negative 7. Now we solve the right-hand side. Plus 10 plus 10. 5x is equal to 55, divide by 5, divide by 5, and x is equal to 11. When we are done solving these two, we need to think to ourselves, do these solutions make sense? When we say that x is equal to 7 and x is equal to 11, sometimes people get confused because they think, well, absolute value can't be negative. We're not talking about the number that's getting put out by the absolute value. We're talking about what numbers work when we plug in for x. So we're saying if we plugged in negative 7 for x, we'd say 5 times a negative 7 is negative 35 minus 10 is a negative 45. The absolute value of that is 45 plus 5 is 50. So when you get a negative answer for an equation like this, it's not necessarily wrong. OK, so make sure you understand that when we're solving for X, we have to find two solutions with absolute value because we have two parts of our V that we're solving for. Just think back to the graph on how we found those two solutions. OK, let's try another example. Let's try another example. Example three wants us to check for extraneous solutions. So our equation is the absolute value of 2x plus 12 is equal to 4x. So what we mean by when we say check for extraneous or extraneous solutions, that's telling me that we have extra solutions that may not work or don't work. OK, so we're going to get two solutions just like we did on the last couple problems. And now we're going to have to check by plugging back in that value to make sure that that statement or the context of our problem holds true. OK, so we set them up the same way in this problem. The absolute value is already isolated by itself on the left side. So we need one of them to be positive and one of them to be negative. So negative 2x plus 12 is equal to 4x. And then we'll write over here, 2x plus 12 is equal to 4x. So if we distribute that negative, we get negative 2x minus 12 is equal to 4x. Add 2x to both sides to get the x's together. 
we get negative 12 is equal to 6x divided by 6, and we get x is equal to negative 2. Now we have to subtract 2 si 2x from both sides so that we can undo um, our operation. So we get 12 is equal to 2x. And so now we're going to divide by 2x, divide by 2x, we get 6 is equal to x. So we got two solutions for x. We got negative 2 and 6. And so now we need to check if one of them or if both of them don't work. Okay, so we're plugging them back in to the problem. So we're going to check. So the absolute value of 2 times a negative 2 plus 12 is equal to 4 times a negative 2. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4 plus 12 in absolute values. And then we have on um, our right side, 4 times negative 2 for negative 8. <clears throat> and now we have 12 minus 4 is a negative 8, or negative 4 plus 12. Absolute value of negative 8 is 8. But now we have a statement that says 8 is equal to negative 8. Is that true? No, it's not true. So that solution would be extraneous. Let's make sure that the other one works. So we are going to plug it back into our original problem. So 2 times 6 plus 12 is equal to 4 times 6. 2 times 6, sorry, that looks like a B. 2 times 6 is 12 plus 12, all in absolute value. It's equal to 4 times 6, which is 24. 12 plus 12 is 24. The absolute value of 24 is 24. So we get the statement 24 is equal to 24, and that works. So that means that x is equal to 6 is a true solution, and x is equal to negative 2 is an extraneous solution, or a solution that didn't work in my problem. So now that we have an idea on how to solve absolute value equations or things that have an equal sign in them, now we're going to look to solving an absolute inequality or things that have a greater than, greater than or equal to, less than, less than or equal to sign. And we're going to see how that changes my approach to solving in these next couple examples. So we're going to start off by graphing, and you don't have to write this down, but I just want you to follow along. So we want to graph the absolute value function, which would just be this part right there. So that's telling me that I'm going to have to move my parent absolute value right to, and then go up one, diagonal one from there. Okay, and connect my dots. And so we're asking ourselves, where is this function less than the y value 4? So the y value of 4 is right here. And we're saying what x values, we're thinking to ourselves, what x values are less than 4 on my graph? Well, that's all of these from negative 2 all the way to negative 6. All of these x values are less than 4 on my graph. So that's what we're trying to figure out when we solve these equations. That's what's happening graphically. So our solutions then, our solutions, are, our solutions for x are between 6 and negative 2. So x is less than 6 and it has to be greater than negative 2. So those would be my solutions for this graph. The same thing goes for greater than or equal to. If we have the or equal to on the bottom, it's the same thing. So now we have to think about what our function would look like for the graph of y is equal to the absolute value of x plus 1. And that just means that my graph is shifting up 1 from the parent function. So we're plotting those points, diagonal 1. And now we're asking ourselves, or we're thinking to ourselves, what x values are on my graph where the y value is 3 or greater than it? What is greater than or equal to 3? So it's 
all of these x values right here on my graph. So we're saying all the x values for this portion of the graph. And my x values for that portion of the graph are negative infinity to negative 3. And then we're asking our, or sorry, negative 2 from negative infinity to negative 2. And then on the right side, it's from 2 to positive infinity. So when we're solving inequalities, we're going to be getting compound inequalities as our solution. So our solution for this would be that x is less than or equal to negative 2, or x is greater than or equal to 2. So those are our two solutions for this picture on this graph. Two more examples for this video on solving inequalities. So it's the same steps to solving for an equation. So we need to isolate the, the absolute value in the inequality, which in this case it's already done for us. And then second, we have to split it into two inequalities, separate inequalities to solve. So we need the positive form, 4x plus 5, less than 13, and we need the negative form, so negative times 4x plus 5 less than 13, and we just solve both of these. So let's start on the left. So we just need to minus 5 first. So we get 4x on our left-hand side is less than, or less than 8, and then divide by 4, and we get x is less than 2. Now we have to distribute this negative to the 4x and the 5, so we get negative 4x minus 5 is less than 13. Add 5 to both sides, and we get negative 4x is less than 13 plus 5 is 18, divide by a negative 4, divide by a negative 4. Whenever we divide or multiply, inequalities by a negative, that means we're going to flip the sign. So rather than it saying less than, it's going to be greater than a negative 4.5. So just for practice, let's sketch our solutions on a number line. So if we have negative 5, negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, Two. So it's an open circle at 2, an open circle at 4.5, so halfway between 4 and 5. And we're saying x is less than 2 and x is greater than 4.5, negative 4.5. So my shading is going to be between those two points. So if we write this as a compound inequality, where x is in the middle, it's less than 2, and negative 4.5 is less than any value for x. So if we want to write this as one compound and inequality, this is my answer. That x for this equation, or inequality, sorry, can be any number between negative 4.5 and 2. And let's move on to the last example. This one reads, the absolute value of x plus 4 is greater than or equal to 6. It's already isolated, so now we just have to move ahead to solving for the two separate inequalities, the positive one on the left and the negative version one on the right. So just solve, minus 4, minus 4, we get x is greater than or equal to 2, 6 minus 4 is 2. So, um, distribute the negative, so we get negative x minus 4 is uh, greater than or equal to 6, add 4 to both sides, and we get negative x is greater than or equal to 10, divide by negative 1, now we get x is actually less than or equal to a negative 10 because we divided by this negative 1, that means we had to flip the sign. So if we sketch our solutions, it's going to be a long number line. I'm going to go by 2. So negative 10, negative 8, negative 6, negative 4, negative 2, 0, and 2. I just went by 2s on my number line, so I didn't have to draw such a long number line. We have a closed dot at negative 10 and a closed dot at 2. And we're saying x is 
greater than or equal to 2 and x is less than or equal to negative 10. So because they're going in opposite directions, we actually can't combine this one, but we do want to write the answer that has a smaller number first. So we're going to say x is less than or equal to negative 10 or x is greater than or equal to 2, and that is my compound inequality. Thank you for taking good notes, and I shall see you soon.